Torah umada often means Torah and non-Jewish learning. In this case, I think Torah Mada actually is the use of Mada in the study of Torah. So what we know about history, what we know about the historical context and the ideas of reading literature politically comes from what we know about what the Greek historians tell us about the Persians, what it means to live a life as a diaspora people. I wrote a book about Megillat Esther, about the Book of Esther, and the basic claim is that the book is really only fully appreciated, fully understood, if you read it in its historical context. The historical context is Second Temple Judaism. Jews have been in the diaspora for about 100, 150 years already, and they're struggling with what it means to live as Jews in the diaspora. Reading the book historically, I think, also means reading the book politically. Probably the most famous fact about the book of Esther is that God is never mentioned in the book. And I think that's also tied in with the politics of the book. That the author is essentially saying, look, this is life in the diaspora. Life in the diaspora, we could dream about returning to the land of Israel, we could dream about rebuilding Jerusalem and, re and a temple and so on. But in the meantime, we're living in the diaspora. We don't have God in our lives in a clear way. And so we have to figure out what does life mean as a Jew in, the, in that kind of world. Even if we assume that they understand that God is operating behind the scenes, behind the scenes means that there has to be someone in front of the scenes, that the Jews have to step up and actually take destiny into their own hands. And then when all things work out, we can say, aha, okay, so God was, was in fact behind the scenes, allowing things to work out. The Torah Umada aspect here is in our of modern sense of how to read Tanakh, that's not just questions of Jewish philosophy and religion, but also very modern questions of politics, dual loyalties, and what it means to live life as a diaspora Jew.